14.3 explains how eukaryotic cells have a little bit extra of a job to do after transcription before the mRNA is able to get out of the nucleus to the ribosome for translation. This diagram here is a very simple uh, diagram showing you the comparison from a prokaryotic cell on the left versus a eukaryotic cell on the right. When transcription takes place in a bacteria cell or a prokaryotic cell, DNA gets transcribed into mRNA. Again, that process is known as transcription. Once it takes place, the mRNA immediately is able to get to a ribosome in which translation occurs in that polypeptide or protein can be built. Now, it's two main steps and it's all taking place in the cytoplasm and can happen at the same time. Transcription and translation can happen concurrently because there's no divider um, from the DNA to mRNA to that ribosome. They're all next to each other. A eukaryotic cell is more complex, obviously, as the cell is complex. DNA is trapped, as we know, inside that nucleus. The process of transcription occurs, but the first strand of mRNA that's made is not the final version that is going to go out through the nuclear pore and make its way to the ribosome in the cytoplasm. The first strand of RNA that is built is called pre-mRNA. And this is like a rough draft version of what mRNA needs to be. There's going to be a little bit of proofreading and cutting and pasting that takes place. And then the final version of mRNA is going to go out through the nuclear pore and make its way to the ribosome in two separate steps, not at the same time, for that polypeptide to be built. Before mRNA is able to get out of the nucleus, there needs to be a couple additions to that pre-mRNA strand. Again, a rough version of what the mRNA is going to be. There is going to be a five prime cap added to the beginning of the mRNA strand. What this five prime end is, is a modified guanine nitrogenous base or nucleotide. At the end, downstream to the right, the three prime end, a poly A tail is going to be added. This is a series of adenine nucleotides. So A, 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 A. And it can be anywhere from 50 to 250 adenines or A's are added to this mRNA strand. Now, the functions of these two ends, it is able to be exported from the nucleus. Now, by having this end on both ends, it protects the mRNA from enzyme degradation. Now, what that means is that when water sometimes is added in, it can break apart the mRNA signal. So this, these caps prevent water from reacting or allowing the mRNA strand to come apart. The final thing is the five prime cap helps with the attachment to the ribosome in the cytoplasm once it's able to get out into the cytoplasm and make the polypeptide. So by having that five prime cap at the very beginning, that modified guanine, it's for easier access into the ribosome to build the protein. Even though there are those two ends added to the pre-mRNA strand, there are also parts that need to be cut out. The process of cutting out parts of the mRNA or pre-mRNA strand is known as 
RNA splicing, or I know it and think of it as cutting. So if you look at the diagram, you can see light parts that are known as introns, and there's going to be dark parts that are known as exons. Now, what exactly is the difference between an intron and an exon? Introns are non-coding sequences. These are going to be nucleotides that will not make a protein or help to build a polypeptide. So introns are non-coding sequences. Exons are going to be codes for the appropriate amino acids to build a protein. So because there's going to be segments that are not needed, they will need to be cut out or spliced out. How I remember between the two, I try to remember that introns stay in the nucleus which means they don't go to a ribosome and they don't do anything in terms of coding for a protein or translation. Exons exit, so they actually get to a ribosome in order to make that polypeptide. Um, another way is thinking the exons are actually expressed. And as I already said, splicing is the fact that introns get cut out and then the exons that's left over, they get glued or joined back together for a final version of mRNA that is going to go out into the cytoplasm to that ribosome. How exactly does the pre-mRNA get spliced or cut and pasted back together? Small nuclear ribonucleoproteins, S-N-R-N-P-S, or pronounced SNRPs, is responsible for removing the introns and splicing or pasting back together the exons. So this, um, a SNRP, is small pieces of RNA that is in the nucleus. It's also joined together with a protein. So you have RNA tidbits together with a protein, and that's what a SNRP is. So all put together, they're able to recognize the splice sites the sites that need to be cut. They recognize that there are introns and they cut before and after the intron and they put the exons together. This is also known as a spliceosome, the SNRPs together with proteins. So spliceosomes, saying in a different way, they catalyze the process, again, as I just said a moment ago, of removing the introns and joining back together the exons. If introns stay in the nucleus, what exactly is the purpose of them being made at all? So remember an intron is a non-coding sequence of that mRNA or the pre-mRNA. So the purpose of an intron is that some regulate gene activity. RNA also can act as an enzyme, which when it does that, it has another name, a ribozyme. Also, as stated on the last slide, SNRPs. SNRPs are small nuclear RNA pieces with proteins. So within the SNRP, there could be bits of introns. Now, another um, reason for RNA splicing is from the alternative RNA splicing. The fact that the pre-RNA, pre-mRNA is spliced allows for different combinations of exons depending on where it is cut at. So if you look at the diagram at the bottom, 
you can see the exons, the pieces that are going to stay, have different numbers. At the very bottom, you can see there's two different strands of mRNA that is going to leave the nucleus and build a polypeptide. So when the introns are cut and removed, allows for the exons to stay and also be put together in different um, order depending on what is removed. So this allows for one gene to make more than one polypeptide.